All right, top 30. Shout out Jacob Bambalo. You know what I'm saying? Everybody know my, my, my GOAT is Wilt all time. You see what I'm saying? My my GOAT is Wilt Chamberlain, my dog. You know what I'm And then Kobe second. Just because those last two Kobe got definitely put him over the edge of, of Michael Jordan, for sure. I'm not going to go into detail with that, but hold on. Let me give you all my 30 real quick. It's pretty elite. Like, it, it's it's really, like, a very realistic top 30. Like, no bullshit. Should I start from 30 or? now? Nah, let's start from 1. Let's see. All right, give me one second. All right, Will at 1, Kobe, Jordan, Magic, Bird, Kareem, LeBron, Tim Duncan, Bill Russell, Dr. J, Kareem, or I mean, Curry, Hakeem, Shaq, Moses Malone, Kawhi, Nicole Jokic, Yes, Nikola Jokic and Kawhi are definitely, I mean, Kawhi's top 15 just because of his crazy runs. And Jokic, yes. Jokic is going to move up. He's going to be a top 10 player by the end of his career. Like, without a doubt. I wouldn't be surprised if he went. I don't know if I can say that. No. No, I think I can say that. I think I can say he possibly could end up being, like, top five. Yes, I think so. <laughs> His only flaw is just defense, bro. Like, he's he's horrible on defense. Bill Walton, yes, Bill Walton, just because you can't re – his injuries and shit, but, like, throughout his he, – he was what? It was what? Uh, I want to say, what, 10 seasons or some shit? He only played a, a an equivalent of, like, six – it was something crazy just because he had a very injury-riddled season. Or, I mean – Injury riddled career, and he was still able to get MVP, Finals MVP, and six man in another championship on a totally different franchise. Damn near ten years later, you see him. No one else did that, so he's he's definitely top twenty. Uh, Charles Barkley, Dirk Nowinski, Kevin Garnett at twenty. Uh, Jerry West, Dwayne Wade, Kevin Durant, Karl Malone, Isaiah Thomas at uh, twenty five, Kyrie Irving. Allen Iverson, James Harden, Steve Nash, and Westbrook. That, that is solid, bro. And, like, I got up to 33. Elgin Baylor, John Stockton, I, and Paul Pierce. I don't know how I feel about that. I'll be that. Paul Pierce at 33? Uh, I don't know. I think I got to delete that. I'll be honest. I don't like that at all. Um... Maybe top 50 for Paul Pierce, but uh, the 30 greatest players of all time. Before you get started, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Help me get to, where are we? We're 462. Help me get to 470. You know what I sign? We are eight away. Round of fucking applause. Keep that grind up. You know what I sign? And for this, is by, I know it's about to have some heavy hitters. And this is 30, so it's like, yeah, it's about to be nothing but heavy hitters. Run it up. At minimum, let's get to five. But don't stop at five. Get to six. Get to six. Get to seven. Y'all saying? And, and beyond. Y'all saying? Like, get it. Like, get it. Y'all saying? Okay. Remy. Ugh. So nearly two years ago, I made a video where I ranked my 50 greatest players of all time. Since then, a lot has changed, as some modern players have continued to build their legacy, He's gonna while be some others have regressed a bit. Least. Along with that, I've actually changed my mind on a couple spots on this list. As time passes, and you learn more about each player, your perspectives can begin to change. That happened to me in just a couple spots on this list. The reason why this video is a top 30 video instead of a top 50 is because most of the significant changes on the list took place in the top 30 spots. Now with all of this being said, this is just my list and my opinion. And in no Let's way see how am valid I claiming my opinion that any is. spot on Let's this list is an objective fact, but rather it just reflects my honest perspective. 
Now, once you see it, you might think it's a wild list, but I honestly think a lot of lists online are very similar because people are too scared to give their honest rankings. I've seen just how angry people can get at a list, and I believe that social pressure incentivizes people to develop a general similar consensus. With that being said, that's not how I operate. This is my list based on my experiences. I get it. Come on, man. All this damn talking. Rage or threaten me. I don't care. This is how I see it, and I want to know how you see it in the comment section below. So without further ado, let's get into it. Number 30, John Stockton. That's Naturally, not. Oh, bro, I'm telling you, I really don't buy shit. I'm at 32. Nah. Just a bit on my list as modern superstars have been climbing their way up the ranks in the last I got years. Elgin Baylor bubble. Stockton is one of the more controversial players on this list. I've seen the now famous criticism that he doesn't have a left hand. But listen, really? if Gary Payton says that you're the hardest player he's ever had to guard, then you know what you're doing. Stockton certainly wasn't anything flashy, but he was extremely oh, fundamentally sound throughout the entirety yeah. of his career. Personally, though, I'm being honest. John Stockton, bro, I believe he's very overrated. Just because, bro, you look at players like John Stockton and how he's comparing to, like, Steve, I mean, Chris Paul. Speaking of, I got to rank Chris Paul. I, he would be around, like, top 30. Like, yeah, I'm being real. I got to knock Russell Westbrook down real quick. He's 30th. Nah, he's 29th, if we being honest. Yeah, he's 29th. Give me one second. Uh, Chris Paul. Just because, yeah, Chris Paul, his play, bruh, he, to me, is like the, the ideal point guard. Him, it's like, okay, he'll get you the ball, he'll get you to your spot, but you got to do 70% of the work. Like, how is that good point guarding? I'm being, maybe defensively, yeah, maybe... Defensively, he was probably one of the best. Okay, cool. But being a point guard, I can't give you that, bro. And on top of that, where I got Carl Malone, top 25 all the time, you had a top 25 player accenting you your entire career. That kind of hurts your case, I'm being honest. He's one of those legends who excelled both in longevity and peak performance. Of the six seasons with the highest assist per game averages in NBA history, John Stockton has five of them which is truly absurd. On top got, of that, who, who he's the, the all-time leader in assists and steals, and neither category oh is remotely God. close. The one glaring omission from his resume is obviously an NBA championship. With one, he likely would have been in the top 20, but without it, he finds himself at the starting point of my list. Number 29, Kevin McHale. What? Okay, I've come on. Kevin McHale? Are we being serious? No, bro. I don't agree with He's like a top 50 player. Maybe. Maybe top 75 if we being real. But he was not. He like near Paul Gasol. That's how I look at him. Like, great accent player. Don't get me wrong, but top 20, top 30 play, No, I can't agree with that. feel bro. like my fellow I'm old heads will understand this ranking of McHale. But younger <laughs> fans don't hear enough about the greatness of this legend. Before Nikola Jokic was the standard of efficiency for the big man, there was Kevin McHale. In the history of the NBA, only two players have averaged more than 20 points per game while shooting over 60% from the field and over 80% from the free throw line. They were Nikola Jokic and Kevin McHale. He was one of the most reliable low post threats that the game has ever seen, with footwork that is second only to Akeem Olajuwon. Yeah, that's Along crazy. with that, his eight foot long wingspan made him a terrifying defender in the painted area. Good. He was also tougher than 99% of the players in the league, as he put up these numbers in the 1987 finals while playing on a broken foot. At okay. six all-defense teams and three championship rings to his resume, he got six and I'm all very defenses? comfortable having Hold a Hold on, let me on check this real quick. He got six all-defenses? I did not know that. Okay. Uh, stats. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Come on, come on. Seven time all okay, he did have a very solid career actually. Seven time all star, three time, uh, 87 all NBA. What third team? I'm guessing, whatever. First team, wow, and fourth in NBA. Okay, but to me, I'm being honest, 
This might be a book. Let me. I gotta compare, bro. I have to. How the saw. Let's see. Okay. All right. I maybe I was tripping off the walk a tad bit. Yes. No, I'm not. I don't think I am, bro. I don't. I think they're like in the same category. He might. Of course, he's above him. I will put Kevin McHale above him for sure. But like, not by much. Like, if, if Paul Gasol is a top 75 player, if he's 75th, he's, like, 65th. You see what I'm saying? Like, nah, nah. I, I can't put him. Nah, 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 nah. It's the torture chamber this high on I don't the agree list. With that. Number 28, John Havlicek. If it wasn't for Bill no. Russell and Larry Bird, then I believe this man would be known as the greatest player in Celtics what? history. Havlicek was one of the all-time great two-way players, as he was a force from the perimeter Top on 50, offense bro. and a stifling antagonizer on defense. Uh. At his peak, he was averaging 28.9 points per game, and he made eight all-defense teams throughout his career, which is an achievement that only a few wing players have ever accomplished. More importantly than anything else, he was a pivotal star in the Celtics dynasty days, as he won a whopping eight championship rings yeah, throughout crazy. his playing career. He won his lone finals MVP in 1974, but he should have won several more, considering how the finals MVP award wasn't introduced to the NBA until 1969. Without Bill Russell, John Havlicek wouldn't be as successful as he was. But without John Havlicek, Bill Russell good. wouldn't have been as successful as he was either. Number 27, Dirk Nowitzki. Damn, that this move. legend was so ahead of what? his time. And this MVP winning seven footer was one Damn of the greatest perimeter shooters that the game has ever seen. What? He was certainly a more capable defensive player in his youth. But as he aged and as much of his quickness yeah, left him, he began to devolve into a below average Evolve. defensive player, <laughs> which keeps him from being higher on my list. With that being said, Dirk has one of, if not the, most impressive title runs in NBA history, where he led his Dallas Mavericks to defeat the Super Team Miami Heat in 2011. For his career as a whole, he made a total of 12 All-NBA teams, while putting up over 31,000 points, earning him the sixth spot on the NBA's all-time scoring list. Number 26, Nikola Jokic. This man wasn't- This is too low, bro. I'm being honest. Depends. I gotta see who above him. Two years ago, which tells you how great he's been of late. Simply, he's one of the most efficient and well-rounded offensive players that the game has ever seen, as he can distribute as well as just about anyone, while being an extremely accurate Ooh. scorer from all areas of the court. He's won two MVPs and now a Finals MVP, while delivering the Denver Nuggets their first championship in franchise history. The only thing holding him back is his defensive play, yeah. that leaves much Man, to be desired. With that being said, the Joker is the youngest player on this entire list, which means he has plenty of time to skyrocket up my list, which I believe he'll do. After all, Michael Jordan was the same age as Nikola Jokic when he won his first championship ring. Wow. Number 25, Giannis. Due to recency bias, it might not be a popular... Let's be real, bro. This is killing me. I'm being out of Johnny Bragg, bro. This is horrible. Like, this is this is bad. I'm, you got Giannis above Jokic? Are you serious? I mean, I get defensively, because defensively, I, I got nothing to say. Like, he is a perfect forward. You know what I'm saying? Like, real shit. Defensively. I can't say nothing about him. But offensively, he's literally like the pure opposite of Jokic. Like, hold on. He's the pure opposite of Jokic. Like, literally. <laughs> he's, he, he's, his, his play style is purely based on bully ball. He has no skill at all. Every time it's somebody that can actually, actually like, offer some type of resistance, he, he's, He's heavily, like, his, his game is heavily impacted because his game is based on uh, smaller players. I can't agree with this, bro. He, he's, he's top, I'll give you this. He's top 50. I can give you that. But he is nowhere near top 25. Like, come on, bro. This is ridiculous. This is bad. I'm being honest. Ahead of Jokic. 
But based on their accolades and their complete body of work so far, I believe Giannis maintains a slight edge. He has more All-NBA selections, infinitely more All-Defense Team selections, an equal amount of MVPs, and an equal amount of championships while being way ahead on the statistical all-time list. Due to his recent failure, and yes, I will call it a failure, in the first round of the playoffs, Giannis hasn't done any climbing up the list since I originally did my 50 greatest, but he is the second youngest player in this group of 30. So I know for a fact that the two-way Greek freak is far from done climbing my list. Number 24, Kevin Garnett. I am at he is a player who I tend to rank higher than most people. One of my hottest takes is that there really isn't much of a difference between Tim Duncan and Kevin Garnett. It's, it's just bad. that one spent the majority 20. of his playing days in the perpetually failing Minnesota organization, while the other had the stability and support of San Antonio. KG literally led the Timberwolves in every major stat category while he was in Minnesota. And then, when he finally joined a team built Ooh. to contend, he immediately won the, won the Defensive Player of the Year award and the championship, mm -hmm. as he was just exiting the prime of his career. With him being one of the most well-rounded players on this list, I'm confident that the big ticket deserves to be as high as I've ranked him. Number 23, Higher. Carl Malone. I'm being honest, bro. Where do I have it? It's close. It's very... Nah, there's a couple of these that are very outlandish. But, like, I have Carl Malone at 24. And I have Kevin Garnett at 20. This like, th those two aren't that bad. But, like, Dirk being that low... I just don't agree with that. The mailman actually dropped a couple spots since high. my original list. And it's for reasons that go beyond the current players climbing the list. I'll explain that in a second. Carl was one of the most consistent and dominant scorers throughout his long career, and he was a pretty solid rebounder and defender as well. Two major aspects prevent him from rivaling Tim Duncan in the conversation of the greatest power forwards in NBA history. For one, he had a nasty habit of turning the ball over, as he has the second most turnovers in NBA history. As a center? If he was a distributing what? point guard, then Come his turnover man. statistic would be more acceptable. But as a power forward, it's just not. Along with that, Carl had several opportunities at winning a championship ring. But without one, it certainly limits his ranking on the all-time list. Number 22, David Robinson. It was only recently that I realized how controversial my higher ranking of Robinson is. Regardless of moments where he was outshined in the postseason, the Admiral still managed to get two championship rings, while being one of the greatest rim protectors in NBA history. He made eight Let me take defense it teams throughout. Okay, this is, this is why you gotta fact check things like this. Let's see. David Robinson. I'm not even about to say that right now. Right, David Robinson. Nah, he had a, okay, this might be the most valid one so far. I gotta do more research on him because apparently he was able to lead his team to like conference finals as a first option. Like that, that's some, like that's that type of shit that, yeah, gets you into those top 25, arguably top 20 debates. And he has a resume. I am being honest, so it's positive. Okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. But uh, I'm more so just targeting on those two championships you got. So you got one in 98. Let's see. This is why you got to research this shit, man. Because you can't really go based off of what people say. You got to just research it for yourself. Uh, David Robinson. What was it? Uh, uh, what was it? Nin 90, 1999 final stats. Let's see. This is why. You see what I'm saying? This is why. He was in... I mean, he was nice, but he wasn't the lead in. Nah, he was getting bored, though. Depending on how much what's the face had. But, like, he was nice, but he wasn't the leading factor for these championships. He probably played his role, but, like, he wasn't the leading factor. I mean, he averaged three blocks, though, and one steal. I mean, he played his role. You see what I'm saying? But he wasn't the leading factor. I stand on that Dexter. Career, and was the Defensive Player of the Year in 1992. This is which are achievements though. that Nikola Jokic can only dream of. 
which is who many people claimed I should have ahead of Robinson. But I don't believe he's earned that just yet. On top of Robinson's proven resume is an MVP award and a high ranking on many of the all-time statistical lists. That, that might be fair because I'm not going to put too much on it just because I don't know him that well. I haven't researched him. Dwayne okay, Wade. I agree with this. Remember I have him how exactly I said at 21. Dropped an extra spot? 22. Well, Dwayne Wade is the reason why. As I'm starting to feel like I ranked him too low on my original list. The Flash was a solid two-way player and is in the conversation with Michael Jordan as the greatest shot-blocking guards in NBA That's history. Crazy. He won three NBA championships, had an One epic final finals MVP. MVP performance in 2006, and many people forget that he was probably the MVP of the 2008 Redeem team, although Kobe and LeBron seemed to get all the shine. In a Seriously? league with great former two guards like Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan, it's easy for Wade to be taken for granted, which is why I'm moving him a bit up my list. Number 20, Charles okay. Barkley. Okay. Until the day I die, I'll be telling people that Charles Barkley was so much better than most people realize. Early in his career, he was a remarkable blend of strength, speed, and athleticism. He's quote, officially listed at 6'6", Yet Barkley himself said that he's around 6'4". Regardless of which I claim, people in the chat always get mad at me. Regardless of what it actually is, Chuck always played way bigger than his height would suggest, as he was one of the greatest rebounders in NBA history, what, to six, go along six? with the fact that he was one of the most efficient scorers of all time as he was frequently shooting around 60% from the field during his prime. In a rule, in the shit, shit like this too, in a rule change in regards to his game specifically, your game, think about it, Michael, that never happened to Michael Jordan, they did something to open up his game, you see what I'm saying? Like, you can't say that with, a, with, with players, like, you can't just say that casually, like that, and without a championship, to me, yeah, he deserves to be top 20. Like, who's doing that? Except for Wilt Chamberlain. You see what I'm saying? 1993 MVP, and I'm more than comfortable putting a round mound of rebound in my top 20. Number 19, Kevin Durant. It's close. He's one of the I have him at 23. The most skilled and most difficult players to guard. That makes sense. So I'm not seen. mad at this. He was the league MVP in 2014, and just a season prior, he had a 50-40-90 year while averaging 28 points per game. He has won the NBA championship Those twice count, and bro. was the finals MVP on both occasions. But I'm not gonna lie, I'm one of those people who don't believe that all rings are created equal. Joining a 73-9 and team that just beat you when you choked away a massive series lead is not something that I'm simply gonna look past, and I'm certainly never gonna forget it. If Durant had won a ring before or after, then it would do a lot to validate yeah, it himself, it but was. he hasn't done that, which is why he isn't higher on my list regardless of his tremendous top 10 capable talent. Yeah. Number 18, Elgin wow. Baylor. I have him at 32. <laughs> For his size, he may have been the greatest rebounder to ever live, as he got as high as 19.8 rebounds per game, at only the height of 6'5". Along with that, Baylor was the most prolific scorer in Lakers history until Kobe Bryant showed up, as he has the NBA Finals record for the most points scored in a Finals game with a total of 61. Essentially, Elgin Baylor is what you get if Michael Jordan gave Dennis Rodman some of his scoring ability. And for this reason, I have him higher on my list than most people typically do. Number 17, Oscar Robertson. I, he was I didn't rank him. Well I would put him like top 30, honestly. Yeah, top 30. Because even in his championship years, I'm pretty sure similar to David Robinson, his championship years, it was like, even though it was out of his prime, he wasn't the leading factor. And like, yeah, it's cool. He was getting all these triple doubles and what he averaged out of five years. He averaged a triple double or some shit. That's awesome. That's radical. That's gnarly. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? He was unsuccessful. You know what I'm saying? Well-rounded offensive so threats that the game has ever He's seen. He's near like Russ. Everyone talks about his triple double season in 1962. But what people usually fail to consider is how he averaged a 30-point triple-double yeah, over yeah, the course yeah. of his first six seasons oh, in six. the NBA. 
Talk about taking the league by storm. With more championships, he would certainly be much higher on my list. He finally got his first championship in 1971 as a member of the Milwaukee Bucks. And although Oscar was certainly a contributing star, he wasn't the leader of that team, as that was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Regardless, his statistical impact is one that hasn't been matched at the point guard position, which <laughs> is, is why for? it wouldn't be a solid top 20 without him. Number 16, Isaiah Thomas. My life has turned into some kind of a sick 25. joke where now I, of all people, have become one of the biggest defenders of Isaiah's oh. life. I don't agree with this. I'm, he's a little, he's way too high for me. I don't agree with this at all. Top, top 20? Yeah, I don't agree with this. I'm being honest. I don't agree with this at all. Finals MVP, two NBA championships. Yeah, I don't. I can't say I do. Top 25, I feel like it's very fair for this dude. All NBA, how many? First team, three all. Yeah, this is like top 25 numbers. He was never a real, con I mean, he was just one year. But he was a never, never a real contender for MVPs. Always top 15. Top 15, you see what I'm saying? Uh, Ty, he cracked top 10 a couple times. Top 5 once. But to me, this is this is like, yeah, like top 25. I feel like 25 is perfect for him. It's not too high. It's not too low. It's not too disrespectful. But it's not like gassing him up too much. It's perfect. Legacy. This is too high. I hated this guy growing up as he was the face of the bad boy Pistons. With that being said, I couldn't deny his talent as Isaiah was one of the greatest dual threats that the game has ever seen, as he could destroy you by dropping 20 assists in a game, and then the next game, he'll destroy you by scoring 40 points. This all-time great ball handler led his Pistons to back-to-back -to -back championships in the late 80s, and if it wasn't for the phantom foul, he probably would have won three straight. He's also one of the most clutch performers of all time, like when he set the NBA Finals record by scoring 25 points in a quarter on a swollen ankle. Or like when he dropped 16 points in just 94 seconds of a pivotal NBA playoff game. I watched it, I dreaded it, and I firmly believe that Isaiah was one of the best to ever do it. Number 15, Julius Erving. Too Irving. low. Notice He's top this 10. video is not titled The 30 Greatest NBA Players of All Time. If it was, I would have to have the doctor much lower on this list. But nah, let me, let me explain, because I got to explain my shit too, why he's higher to me. Name a player that had success both individually and team-wise in two different leagues. That has to be top 10. Like, who's done that before? Who's just as dominant both individually and team-wise in two different leagues? Him, like, that is top 10 worthy, bro. Come on, man. No one did that. Nobody. What? MVP with the Sixers. MVP with the Nets in the ABA. He won, what, two championships with them and a championship with the Sixers. Like, I don't know. I don't agree with this. I would have to have the doctor much lower. He's one He's one of those anomalies like, like uh, Bill Walton. You see what I'm saying? Like, who's doing that? Nobody. Like. <laughs> That's just me. But when you include his ABA accomplishments, he has one of the most impressive careers of all time. Between the two leagues, he has 16 All-Star appearances, four league MVPs, and three championship rings. Along four with that, MVPs. he was one of the most dynamic high flyers, and the man was scary in fast break situations, dunking on anyone and everyone who stood in his path. He was also a member of the nearly undefeated 1983 76ers, who some Philly fans oh, oh, oh. still believe is the greatest NBA team of all time. Number 14, mm. Moses Malone. Perfect. I got him exactly at 14, I think. Yep. I'm so I agree tired with of hearing people's lists of the greatest centers this. of all time, and somehow he keeps getting omitted from it. Moses wasn't just one of the greatest rebounders in league history but I believe he was objectively the greatest offensive rebounder of all time, which is a trait you just can't overappreciate, as any team would love to have that many second chance opportunities. 
he was a pretty darn good scorer too, as he got as high as 31.1 points per game in 1982. For his career as a whole, he won six rebounding titles. He was a three-time league MVP, and he was the finals MVP of the championship winning 1983 76ers. Number 13, Jerry He's West. Too high. Anyone who objectively watches his highlights and pays attention to his skills can see that West was so ahead of his time. Jerry had fantastic mechanics on his really? jumper and was extremely crafty <laughs> at getting the shots he wanted. Quite simply, he was one of the greatest scorers and playoff scorers to ever live. The underrated part of his game, though, shot. was his defensive ability. Jerry was arguably the best pickpocket during his playing days, and he was a remarkably sneaky shot blocker. For his career, he made five all-defense teams, and all of those were in the twilight of his career, simply because the honor did not exist until that point. If they had always been available for him to win, then he might have had more all-defense team selections than any other guard in league history. Add in a championship ring as a member of the 1972 Lakers, what? which was the team that won 33 straight games, and he certainly what? deserves a spot in the top 15. But it kills, his, it kills him because he didn't win finals and repeat. You see what I'm saying? So he wasn't the leading factor. Now, how do you know if you know how to do Even though, it, it, I guess, him winning without... Winning the title, it, it doesn't though. It doesn't equal it at all. <laughs> at all. Number 12, Steph Curry. I have him at 11. On my list, Steph made a bigger jump than any other player, shooting 11, 11 spots up the list. Since what? that initial ranking, he's become the all time leader in three pointers made. He's won a fourth NBA championship ring, and he secured his first finals MVP. But let's be real, it really should have been a second. Along with that, Steph has one of the greatest single seasons on any resume, as we witnessed his legendary 2016 unanimous MVP season, where he had the highest scoring 50-40-90 season in league history. Some people want to move him into the top 10, but I think that's a little too much right considering how Steph is not an elite defensive player and is kind of just a one-way player. Sure, yeah. he's not horrible on yeah. defense, he holds but he's own. certainly not one of the best at the position. Yeah. Based not on my all. list, he's either the second or the third greatest one-way player of all time. So with that in mind, the 12th spot is certainly nothing to scoff at. Number 11, Shaquille O'Neal. Wow, this is so close to mine, bro. It's actually kind of insane. I got Shaq at 13. And her team at, at 12. This was one of the more controversial spots on my previous list, but I'm sticking to it. Now I understand Shaq had one of the top three greatest peaks that I've ever seen, but that's the thing. We have to emphasize his peak because Shaq didn't maintain his elite exactly. form as well as just about every other player in the top 10. This shouldn't be a debated point either, Considering how Shaq's bad conditioning is something he personally admitted to in a public conversation with Kobe Bryant. Pathetic, with that bro. being said, Shaq is as close to being in the top 10 as you can be without making it. And he won four championship rings and three finals MVPs. He should have been the first unanimous MVP winner in 2000, but one smooth-brained voter went with Allen Iverson instead. Smooth brain. <laughs> Number 10, Hakeem Bro, Olajuwon. I'm telling you, I really know what I'm talking about. They're all in the same category. Like, these are all niggas I got um, that are just outside the top 10, even though he's top 10. He's like, I got Curry, Sha Shaq, and Hakeem in the exact same category, though. He just got them ordered differently. That's why he has the fewest championship rings of any player in my top 12. But I don't believe that's any fault of his own, as the dream was devoid of superstar talent help throughout the prime years of his career. Sure, he had Ralph Sampson very early on, but it didn't take long for Sampson's back issues to ruin that. Of players who won back to back championships, Hakeem Olajuwon was the only player to do it while not having a single all-star team. He was a beast in many aspects as he not only has a quadruple double on his resume, but he nearly had two in the same month. He's one of the top three greatest defensive players in league history, and he was often among the league leaders in scoring as well, which very few players can claim. The dream was so good that he was selected before Michael Jordan, yet Number no one, one in Houston even regrets it. 
Number nine, Tim Duncan. I have met the eight. Big Bro, this is model wide. Consistency in the game of basketball as he earned himself 15 All-Defense teams and won five wow. NBA championships over the span of 16 years. His 2003 postseason was one of the most dominant playoff stretches, as he historically crushed the New Jersey Nets, nearly getting the only quadruple double That's in wild. NBA playoff history. That's wild. Thanks to a talented supporting cast, Duncan was able to compete for championships long after his prime days were behind him. Personally, that's what kills his debate, honestly. Because his last, what, he has five, so his last two championships, he didn't win finals MVP. It was Tony Parker and Wispace. That is, to me, what is what hurts his debate. Just because it's like his entire career, he was on a contending on a contending team his entire career. Like, that is a leniency a lot of people do not have. You see what I'm saying? Like, a lot. So, you got to put that into account, too. So, he's in the same category with me as, like, Bill Russell. Because, let's be honest, like, Bill Russell arguably – Part of the greatest, no, the greatest franchise of all time. I think it's fair to say that. What arguably, if not the greatest coach of all time, Red Arbeck. You see what I'm saying? But you get my just same with him. Greg Pop, what is he? He's top five coach ever. You see what I'm saying? So Which like, is why I yeah. don't have him ranked they as were high successful as without him. Might. Still, Duncan certainly deserves a spot in the top ten. Number eight, Kobe Bryant. I moved the Mamba up a spot oh since my last list, God. as I figured I had him a bit too low. In this terms of his peak, I believe Kobe has a solid argument for a spot in the top five. But when you look at his career as a whole, it's not quite as glamorous. Kobe took a while to get going in his career, as his first few seasons saw limited production and limited minutes. And his final few seasons in the NBA were straight up ugly as he was rotating between major injuries while shooting 35% from the field on nearly 20 shots per okay, game. That just tells me he's, he's stat watching. All right, cool, 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 cool. You know what I'm saying? You can't, let's be real, you can't really judge somebody based off of their last couple of years in the league. And that's just facts. That's not even like, we don't really go based off of you got to go out with a bang. And that's just truth. Like, think, think of Dirk. Like, Dirk went out averaging, what, seven points? You see what I'm saying? Personally, man, what makes Kobe, to me, second all-time, I got to go in on this, bro. This is last two championships. Like, nobody's and, – and what the circumstances he had – okay, let me just put this into perspective. Before they got Pau Gasol, same season, they were 35-20. and 20. With Gasol, you know what I'm saying? They went 57-25, and 25, my dog. So you're telling me – they lost five games with a subtle change like that with a dude, with a former all-star because he wasn't an all-star that year. You see what I'm saying? That's all he needed compared to all the others. Compared to Shaq, he needed Kobe. Compared to um, Jordan, he needed Scotty. I can't say the same about Will. Compared to, to Tim Duncan, he needed a great system and great pieces around him. You see what I'm saying? I can't agree with this, bro. I... I can't agree with this at all. And who else? Bird. You think of Bird. Same thing. He got top 50. What? Three top 50 players on his team? Magic. Same thing. A top a top 10 player on, on his team his entire career. Those are leniencies Kobe never had. And on top of that, can we even say, if, if Pau, can we genuinely say, bro, if Pau Gasol did not come to the Lakers, would he still be a, a Hall of Famer? Based on his NBA career, would he? I cannot say we can. <laughs> he would be known as one of those players that's like, okay, he was nice. Yeah, Pau Gasol, like, who? That Tony Allen dude. Oh, yeah, pa Tony Allen was nice, but you got to remind him about it. You see what I'm saying? Kobe made him into that, oh, yeah, Pau Gasol liked that. Like, yes, bro, stop playing Seasons with in the Kobe NBA like were straight up ugly. As he was rotating between major injuries while shooting 35% from the his field bullshit. on nearly 20 shots his horse per game. Radish. Still, horse how great were those glory days? At his horse peak, radish. he was scoring 35 points per game while being first team all defense, which is something only Michael Jordan has basically done as well. This is horse Kobe radish. won five championships, and his last one doesn't feel appreciated enough, as Kobe led his Lakers to defeat the stacked Boston Celtics. And let me say but something about that too. Even though he had a bad game, he played perfect defensively because look at how bad Ray Allen shot. 
Ray Allen just was playing very good defense on them. Or the, the Celtics organization in general, not the organization, but the team in general, was just playing amazing defense on them. You see what I'm saying? Uh, but what makes great, because let's be real, bro. Nah, I'm being honest. The MVP of that game was Ron Artest. <laughs> but he stepped up in other ways. Like, every time they needed a bucket, he would make one. Every time it was in, like, one of those important momentum-shifting buckets, he would make it every time, whether it's getting to the line or a mid-range or, or a simple layup. You know what I'm saying? He was there like Allstate, my dog. Come on. Yes, Bobby had a broken index finger on his shooting hand. Too far out of the they're bullying like that. that shit. Number seven, Magic Johnson. Almost the entirety of his room. career, oh Magic was competing for four. NBA championships. I can't agree In my with opinion, this. he has the best single playoff performance of all time, as he dropped this stat line in game six of the 1980 finals which he did as a rookie yeah, while filling wild. in for an injured Kareem Abdul-Jabbar at center. Magic was the embodiment of playing the game the right way, as he specialized in making his teammates better. For his career, he won five NBA championships, he was the finals MVP three times, and he won three league MVPs. Magic also made nine trips to the NBA finals before his first retirement. And for perspective, Magic only played 12 seasons before that first retirement. That's crazy, bro. Some have it ranked even higher than I do, but for me personally, a lack of solid defensive prowess is what limits his ranking. Two steals leaders, though. Which makes somebody comment on a little please. How the hell can you have two defense, two primary defensive stats and be the leader of it, and yet not make defensive the, a defensive team? To me, that makes zero sense. Like I don't get that. Number six, Larry Bird. I know it's a hot take to have him ranked over Magic, I don't, I don't but the thing about Larry Bird individually is that he was yeah. competing in the much tougher Eastern Conference, as the East was a bloodbath in the 1980s. Along with that, I just believe Bird was the more impressive player from an individual Overall. perspective. Yeah, I agree. As he had I agree no with holes this. in his game. I agree he with this. He was a lethal scorer, he was an elite rebounder, he was an all time great passer, and he was an extremely underrated player. I understand it, player, I should say. I which understand. is a topic I've made entire videos about. This makes At sense. one point, Bird had 50 40 90 percentages while averaging close to 30 points per game over a five year stretch which quite simply is one of the greatest individual achievements of all time. If it wasn't for his back injuries cutting his career very short, then Bird may have been able to build a career strong enough to consider him in the top three. Number five, Bill Russell. Too high, Let me just say this understand. plainly. If Bill Russell was an efficient league leading scorer, he'd easily be my choice as the greatest player of all time. It's kind of astonishing that I'm putting him this high on my list, yeah. <laughs> considering how he was severely limited offensively. Now, with that being said, Russell always claimed that he did the things that actually won basketball games. And who am I to argue with him? In his career, Russell won 11 championship rings, including a ridiculous eight straight. Along with that, he was 10 and 0 in series deciding seventh games. And he wow. always played well in those instances. To this day, many people believe he's the GOAT defensive player, and if the Defensive Player of the Year award had existed, he would have been collecting them like Infinity yeah. Stones. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's all about winning, and anyone could call him their GOAT, and they'd get no arguments from me. Number 4. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar When it comes to the all-time statistics, Kareem has got an argument as good as anyone's for the top spot. What's crazy is that Kareem is second all-time in scoring, and if blocks had been calculated in his first few seasons in the league, he would probably be the all-time leader in block shots as well. Seriously. If players like Kevin Durant get a boost for being difficult to guard, then so should Kareem, who had the most indefensible shot ever, his patented sky hook. The only thing drawing him back is the fact that he was not the best player in over half of his championship teams. Two out of six. That's why he can't be top five to me. Like, he can't. Because there's levels to this. You see what I'm saying? There's level, and you're not on that level. That's just fact. You, for most of your championships, you you weren't the most dominant force. Even though, yeah, 
You see what I'm saying? You had your impact on your team. You weren't the leading factor. That kills your goat. Like, goat debate. When we talking about top five, like, when we talking about the, 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 you know I'm saying? The top of the top, you know I'm saying? That counts. And that, that hurts his, his goat debate to me. Regardless, Heavily. he earned 15 All-NBA teams, 11 All-Defense teams, and a whopping six league MVPs. So he's certainly worthy of being at least in the fourth spot. Number three, Will Chamberlain. Who the fuck Everyone second? thinks I'm crazy, and that's what? fine, because I'm not pumping the brakes on this so-called crazy train. To me, Will Chamberlain is far greater than people usually give him credit for. He's, he's my Stop goal. and think about what an average of 50 points and 25 rebounds looks like on a nightly basis. I don't think people actually take the time to fathom that. Wilt broke so many records throughout his career that they just started calling him the record book. People try to belittle his accomplishments and make sense of it by saying that he played against weaker competition. But when you consider that Wilt played against Bill Russell, Walt Bellamy, and Nate Thurman each around 12 to 16 times per season, then you start to realize just how impressive his accomplishments yeah. were. Honestly, I could elaborate on Wilt's ranking endlessly, but if you've seen any of my Wilt videos before, you get it. On the YouTube music app, you can bump I your really songs wonder in the who's background. second, dude. I thought oh, Wilt was gonna be, I know his goal is MJ, but who's second? Number two. Ah, uh, LeBron. Oh my God, bro. No. No. No, 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 no. no. This is bad. I'll be that. LeBron at second, bro. Are you tweaking off a of walk hard? All right. This is, this is my thing. The thing that kills LeBron's go to debate, bro, him going to Miami. Like, if he never went to Miami, if he stayed on, that's, it counts, so Like, these are the things that kill that 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 kill your chances of being top five. Like the crop of the crop not doing shit like this. And that's just factual, my slime. You know what I'm saying? But he him going to Miami kill his go to bed. If he stayed in Cleveland his entire career, got uh let's say an an organic championship. You see what I'm saying? He just stayed there. Just a pure organic championship. Okay, this would be way more understandable because peak wise, he's up there with like top three peaks ever. And I stand on that for sure. But like, it's other things that go into the GOAT debate that definitely limits him like heavily. You know what I'm saying? That's just me though. LeBron James. A couple years ago, I had LeBron fans all up in their feelings when I ranked him fourth on my list. Bro, this is Honestly, high. that was less about a negative view of LeBron and more about him. my positive views on, of Kareem man. and Wilt. This is some bullshit. At this point, I'm though, honest. LeBron has built up such a body of work that he has to be at least in the second spot. He's earned an absurd 19 All-Star selections. He's won four NBA championships, four Finals MVPs, and four League MVPs. No. He's now the NBA's all-time leading scorer, the all-time leading playoff scorer, and he's up to the fourth spot on the NBA's all-time assists list. Honestly, there is an argument for LeBron to take the number one spot, and I truly believe that. But that argument would have to focus on the complete body of work of his NBA career so far, which is only becoming more impressive the longer he plays. For me, peak performance is what's most important though, which takes us to our number one spot. Michael Jordan. Number yeah, one, yeah, yeah. Michael Jordan. Six championships in eight years. He earned nine first team all defense selections, and he won the scoring title in all of those seasons. All as I gotta well. say, all I gotta say is, I got literally one thing to say. Will had hella shit limited in his game. He had some shit that actually helped him, helped his game in some way, or like accented his game. You see what I'm saying? He had the league looking out for him. Will had the league after him, dog. Y'all saying? He didn't. He was the golden, the golden child, the media kid. It was not the same for Will, bro, at all. That's all I got to say. <laughs> not only was Jordan six and zero in the NBA Finals, but he was constantly breaking <laughs> records bullshit, in man. those finals. A lot of Gen Z LeBron fans want to discredit Jordan's competition and try to belittle his dominance over the league. But here's the thing. 
The only reason you're able to belittle Jordan's competition is because MJ dominated the league in the first place. Let's take Karl Malone for example. If Michael Jordan never existed, Karl Malone would have had three league MVPs instead of two. He would have had five scoring titles instead of zero, and he would have won two championships instead of anything? zero. Without MJ as an obstacle, Malone is rivaling Tim Duncan for the title of the greatest power forward of all time. But because Jordan existed, he's treated like an afterthought, as his legacy is completely different. That's the effect MJ had on the league, as he kept Malone, Stockton, Barkley, Ewing, Kemp, Penny, Miller, and many others from ever winning an NBA You hear team. these niggas though? You see what I'm saying? League. As he, he kept him alone, stock Malone, stocked in two a top twenty five and a top thirty player. Okay. Then Barkley. Barkley a top twenty player. Okay. Ewing. Ewing what a top fifty player. Come Kemp, on, dog. Penny. Kemp a top seventy five player. I don't really know him that much, but what top? I say top fifty. I really don't know him. I, I don't know. Miller and what? Stockton, Barkley, Ewing, Kemp, Penny. Penny Hardaway? Are you kidding? Bro, come on, man. Like, <laughs> bro, you can't be serious right now, bro. You can't be serious. Like, uh, he had it the easiest out of out of out of Kobe and Wilt. He had it the easiest, bro. That's just because look at the '80s. Like, look at the '80s. Look at the '80s are literally like the perfect explanation of like of of. Uh, how do I say? It? How do I say? It? How do I say? It? That that's what to me. That's just what. Hmm, how, how how am I trying to say this? That's what. Hmm, that's what separates him from from Kobe. That's what separates him from Wilt. In the eighties, that was his. If if anything, that was his time to to shine on some shit. You see what I'm saying? That was his time to prove like. Um. I could go against real static. Like my play my play build can go against real heavy hitters. And he failed miserably, dog. Yeah sad. Only time he, he, he deemed successful was when he had an amazing coach, amazing system around a, an amazing team. Can't say the same about Wilt. You can't say the same about Kobe. Yeah sad. Or uh, you can say the same about Kobe, but the result was the same. You see what I mean? That's just me. Miller and I, I mean, and also Kobe had had a uh, he had Phil Jackson. I know, but um, where, where am I going with this? Where am I going with this? Where am I going with this? He had Phil Jackson, but like, let's be real, bro. His other his his, his second man was what? I'm talking about the second run in general. His second man was what? Paul, Paul, Paul Gasol, dog? And then role players. He just played very well with them. I mean, yeah, he just played very well with them. Without him as a key, they're not even a playoff team. And that's just factual. Like, come on, dog. With, with, without him, without him, they were a second round team. Like, come on, bro. It's, it's levels to this the shit. Others from it really is. An NBA championship. This is just one of the many reasons why he's still my choice as the greatest player of all time. I, nah, I don't understand. So what do you guys think? Nice. How does your list differ from mine? It, I, I get it, but there is some bullshit. That, I understand, though, but it's some bullshit. It, it, it's some bullshit. Like, if, if you really look into it, bro, Michael Jordan is not the GOAT. He's top three at best. I don't have him over Kobe just because Kobe, like I said, his last two just solidify him as the second spot. MJ, he just had so many leniencies, bro, that these other niggas did not have. That's just me, though. But that's about it.